All right, fam, today we'll be cleaning the bearings out of the stock reel, the Kyoden Black Knight. And uh, I did my unboxing video last time and you guys asked to clean the bearings out because they're ceramic hybrid bearings. And uh, you know, naturally you do not lubricate your uh, ceramic hybrid bearings, especially the way that they have done it, which is pretty darn thick. I mean, you look at this thing right here, that thing doesn't even spin. Watch, I'm gonna take this out and then put in my bearing tool, which is just a chopstick. So, let's take this out, put it right there. Don't lose it, Jimbo. You lose it, you're dead. All right, so, here we are. Get this tool. Doesn't even spin. All right, so, uh, I guess I'll pop this out for you guys and I'll show you guys how nasty, I mean, look at this, shine on the orange. Come on, focus. Shine on this thing right here is terrible. So there's many ways to clean this. I'm gonna go walk over and I'm bringing uh, my favorite solvent, but I'm gonna tell you guys I'm not using the solvent today because I know a lot of people wanna know how I clean it. I'll tell you, I use solvents, but because not everybody are responsible, I've decided not to use a solvent in this video. I'm just gonna use warm soapy water, dish soap, don't use hand soap. Don't use any soap with any sort of uh, oil, you know, like those aloe stuff or uh, lotion type stuff. Dish detergent is probably the best in warm water. So I'll be back with some stuff. All right, folks. So you can use all sorts of chemicals to clean your bearings. For instance, I use this guy right here, the CRC Break Clean. Uh, and there's a couple different versions of this. This is the flammable one. This is not the ozone friendly one. Okay, so for those who are uh, loving the planet, don't use this. Uh, other things I use is acetone, you know, nail polish remover, um, heck, uh, people use gasoline because all these chemicals here is a degreaser and it removes a lot of grease and a depending on what type of uh, chemicals you use, you definitely want to clean uh, the orange seal separately because I guess that's like plastic, maybe like some sort of a rubber painted um, seal. I believe it's some sort of stainless steel ring and it has like plastic paint over it, like a plastic dip. But anyway guys, um, today we are just gonna clean it with hot soapy water. I have just soap here. I'm trying to stay friendly, you know, uh, eco-friendly because I don't know how responsible the folks are when they're watching the videos. Um, you guys should follow your own state laws on how to discard chemicals, all right? I'm not gonna talk about it for my state. You guys can look it up yourself for your own state, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, orange seal, so I'll take Something nice and sharp, carefully pry it out. But man, this thing is so shiny. Bloop. All right, that could go in, cause it's just hot soapy water. And this guy could go in, hot soapy water. Boom, boom. And I'm gonna do the other one. But basically, what I'll do is I'm gonna have it in there, shake it around. You know, oops, it's really hot. Put it in my uh, hot water temperature thingy, majiggy. Super hot. But yeah, let me take the other one out too, and I'll throw it in there. Uh, this one is a little bit more difficult to take out on the side plate. This guy is actually pretty tough to take out. If you guys take these screws out, careful because when you lift this plate here, see this thing here? It does actually have a spring on it. Um, I have no idea why there's a spring in there, but there is actually a spring there. Just be very careful. I am just gonna manually take this out and hopefully I can take it out using this way. So let's just give it a shot. I know I'm gonna take this out very easy, no problem. The problem is putting it back together. See this uh, magnet force field here? It prevents me from <laughs> uh, putting it back in. Yes, it came out easy. So for me, this one came out easy. For my uh, Dark Wolf, man, I could not pull that out. I had to uh, take the whole thing apart and force it out and that was a hassle. But let me throw this back in here and um, let's get to cleaning, shall we? Now, before I put this in there, I think this one might be a little bit drier. It didn't seem like I have anything. Look at this. This one actually spins. The other one did not spin at all. So this one's dry. This one's good. Huh, I have no idea why this one was like caking oil and didn't want to spin. But let me just take this out for right now and just yoink. I know it's wet, but uh, oh well, I'm impatient. And plus I want to spin it anyway to get the oil out. Well, it's, it is spinning now, but I'm not spinning it too fast. 
Anyways, I'm gonna soak it in some hot water like this, and I'm gonna take my chopstick and my, you know, shake it around. Heck, you going to? All right. Anyways, I'm gonna do this for a little bit. Let's sit a little bit, get the soap nice, and uh, penetrating the bearings, and then I'm gonna do a quick rinse, hot water. And after I'm done, I'm actually gonna go do it outside. I'm gonna take an air can, okay? I'm gonna leave uh, the bearing right on to here, and I'm just gonna blow it. It's gonna spin, it's gonna make crazy noise. But I'm gonna do it again when in here after it's dry. So uh, stick around, I'll be RB. All right, guys, this is the first one. Hot, soapy water, I already dried it out. It was amazing. Listen to this. Put it right next to my mic. That thing is purring at home, man. But yeah, it spins pretty good. Very impressive for the ceramic hybrid bearings on the side. This one here earlier, I blew it. Not too impressive. I mean, one side looks like it's a, you see it's pretty open and then one side, it kind of have a shield thing so I should blow it from this side. All right, let's try it. It was pretty fast, definitely better. Way better than big four, but look, it stops pretty darn quick. Eh, well, it is what it is. It's what it came in with. All right, fam, the best way to put your bearing back in is to take two wooden chopsticks and try to put the pin back in. Again, I mentioned earlier within this video, uh, one of my uh, viewers have taken this apart and sprung, uh, the springs kind of spun out. And uh, yeah, now that's missing. We don't know what the hell is gonna happen to his reel, but he says it still works. So if you guys know what's gonna happen, if these springs uh, come out, um, leave a comment below. But uh, two chopsticks save the day. Didn't need to take this whole thing apart. But I have opted to use the bearings shieldless. Let's just see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been a little bit better. Definitely a little bit better uh, than before. Let me just check something out. Okay. So the tension was set properly. Hmm. Uh, hold up. I think it's okay. This is ceramic hybrid bearings too. I got the SDS, the ones that I used for um, my Zephyr and I swapped it off because I put the other bearings in there, the micro bearings. Anyways guys, it seems like it's been a little longer, not much better, but um, I'm sure it's gonna be a lot better because it feels like it goes a lot easier, at least to me, but we'll find out when we go cast. Um, so let's put out a four pound test line and I think I'm gonna put a different rod on this time. I'm gonna put back my casting Max Steel, the ultralight tip. Let's go. Oh wow, baby bass everywhere. All right, guys, I'm at my favorite casting spot. Got my other reel for my other video over there. Stay tuned for that. But it's time to do the cast test. And yo, that water fountain is off. There's turtles all over that. That's pretty cool. And this will make things easier for cast testing, but the wind is here it's gentle right now, but it's supposed to pick up. It looks like it's blowing from this direction. The water, yeah, it's blowing from this direction. So it's gonna be a little shorter and also it's gonna blow things to the left. Gotta compensate. Uh, all right, on to the cast test. Before I jump onto it, always got to introduce my other gears so that you guys know what I'm working with. I got the Cast King, Max Steel, the BFS rod. This is a twin tip rod. It comes with an ultralight and a light, but I'm using the ultralight today. The total rod length of this is um, 1.8 meters. Lower rating is one to eight grams. For the ultralight one, two to eight pound test line. Fast tip action. All right, look at that. And the uh, lure I have on here is the Angry Bird Hollow Body Frog. Floats really well, buzz really well, okay? And I have four pound test line. So let's get to it. I do not know anything about this reel. I actually heard a few bad things after I purchased it. So uh, I hope it's not the case. I'm gonna start off with uh, four breaks because like I said, I heard some bad news. So uh, first cast softly. Look at that. That has brakes on four, soft cast went out. 
And let's talk about the brakes in a second, but I want to do a few more cast tests and see what's going on. Because if I have my um, Zephyr and I cast that very soft, it should stop. I mean, uh, <laughs> any other of my BFS reels. Uh, I guess maybe not GH100 or Dark Wolf, because this is a new news to me. But for anyone who does left hand fishing, oh man, it's, it's bad news. Okay, let me just crank this thing all the way up for a second to five breaks, okay? Cast that out there. It goes far, but it backlashes. This is not good. Guys, this is totally not good. And now I'm gonna leave it at four, but I'm gonna cast harder and I'm gonna use my thumb because it's gonna be all about my thumb nowadays when I use this reel. And I guess from that distance from here, that is 80% of the way, 80% of the way, okay? And I guess this is the time where I'll explain what the situation is. So obviously this lure right here, I mean this reel right here, uh, it copied Shimano, the FTB braking system. It just hopped on the bandwagon just like uh, the GH100, which is the first, first CDM reel that actually done this. And for those who are first time watching my videos and don't know what I'm talking about, let's open this guy up. This braking style from Shimano, okay? See the brakes right here? Here's the problem. The problem is that, see this right here? When they made these braking system for both right and left hand reels, apparently they did not do anything different with the left hand reel. They actually took the right hand side and just shoved this thing in here. So the magnets are not installed properly. The, uh, the magnetic force field, right, is just not proper and is not slowing down the spool properly. Now, I mean, it's still slowing down because it's a magnetic force, but it's not doing it in an efficient way where it's supposed to be. So with that said, even at the max break, as you saw, I cast it far distance and it just overspooled. And if I were to put it on three and a half, try to get my max distance and just, you know, thumb it a little bit, right there, I got 95% away. It's great, I get distance, but as you saw earlier, you gotta be using your thumb. If you're not using your thumb, you're not gonna be able to use that whole break. So is this real bust? So far with throwing this lure, I say maybe. So what we need to do is, um, I mean, I'm doing pretty good because you know, I am actually using my thumb. I am pretty proficient with it. So um, yeah, it's a very, very interesting thing that they've done here. And they said it's actually in many of these GH100 variant reels, especially on the, well, only on the left-hand side. It's interesting because when I did the unboxing, that's, how, that's when I found out via the comments, for those who actually tried this reel, they told me about it. So this is uh, kind of upsetting. I should have done a little bit more research before I bought it, else I would never do this, did this uh, video. But casting is not bad so far. Other than a stupid plane flying over, over me when I'm doing this awesome video bit. And the reason why I'm just keep casting it right now is because I saw some bass on the banks earlier and <laughs> who does not love catching a bass using a topwater bait, right? So I'm hoping I could hook up one very quick and show you guys drag clicker. Oh, in fact, let me just uh, put this down a little bit. You hear, right? Yeah, I just wanna hear it go off in a consistent um, manner rather than, you know, feel some short pulls. But the click sounds great. I like the clicks. It's definitely, uh, you know, it makes fishing a lot more fun, especially for BFS fishing when your drag is always be running, right? So, um, yeah, let's see if I get one right here. But I will, I guess, jump right into throwing my next two lures. I'm gonna keep this video a little short because I'm actually quite disappointed that the breaking is not really there. And I can't really recommend my fans, especially the left-hand folks, and I can't really tell the folks who use right-hand reels exactly how well this reel would be, right? I mean, the distance is great if you guys are thumbing. Like most of my other videos, you know, I just let things run and see how things backlash. Right here, I'm, I'm like constantly trying to not backlash because I'm afraid how things are gonna be. Like, look at that. It just goes. Ay, ay, ay. All right, guys, very quick tip. I am tying the uni knot, okay? But before I actually cinch this loop down after you did, at your last point, right? You take this tag end right here and you put it through that loop right there and you actually hold your tag end and pull down 
and it almost looks like a clinch knot now, right? And this will make your tag end weedless because sometimes, especially when you're fishing gunk, right? The tag end pointing backwards, it picks up weeds. So let's throw this Z vibe right there from Euro Tackle, okay? 16th ounce, we gotta put this thing to the limit on the lightest lure that I ever would cast. And then we go into my last lure I'll use, which is a 16th ounce jig head plus a little soft plastic. All right, let's do some casting here. Oh, good Lord, dogs. Um, okay, went to the left. I am at three and a half breaks. I forgot to change it, but you know, I did thumb it well. Uh, distance wise, it's okay, but it went to the left. So let me adjust, still going left. So uh, that says one thing, those bearings, uh, the bearings plus the spool weight is not, um, good enough this is all light lures i mean i'm getting closer and closer because i'm compensating my casting style okay and uh obviously these are not micro bearings micro bearings is what you need to throw super light stuff right and look at that i'm getting more and more accurate but i have to say um if the braking was there you know i don't need to keep pressing the thumb it probably go further uh that probably landed probably between 35% to 45% of the way. I want to throw harder, but you know, harder I throw is actually harder for me to compensate, you know, the, the accuracy for right now, because it's a new reel for me. And I'm not gonna spend my time um, trying to figure out the cast, because right now we're just casting the performance, right? I mean, that's that's pretty not bad, but I backlash. Uh, but yeah, the braking is bad, boys and girls. The distance there for the last cast, again, is between 35 to 40% of the way to that water fountain, which is close to 71 feet for reference. Yeah. Last lure, and um, it's a Euro Tackle, their B Vibe, two inch swim bait, and a 1 16th ounce jig head, or 1.8 as is displayed here, and a tungsten jig head. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys see that, but anyways, let's get into the water and. Um, I expect this to go pretty far because this is uh, my bread and butter and most stuff goes far and yeah, I gotta, I gotta tap it. I'm not confident in throwing this guy without tap. I mean, most of the stuff I tap anyway. So, um, you know, throwing that one right there, I didn't really focus on uh, the distance. It could have been like 70% of the way. So let's try it again. All right, that's interesting. Throwing this lure here, I guess maybe because it's bulky, the wind is kind of holding the lure down, um, but yeah, it's close to 70%. The wind is blowing towards me. I think I could probably do 75 if I really want to try, but I really don't want to backlash, but let's swing harder. Uh, kinda, okay. It's, it's interesting. It's not the um, backlash and it's crazy with this one compared to the other one. All right, let's do this guys. So it's just three and a half breaks and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold it at all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a soft cast though. N no thumbing. Okay, so I guess it will overspool, but uh, technically, technically, if you guys are thumbing right before you hit the water and you throw the right power, you still could use this reel if you're a left-hander. But, you know, the brakes is literally not there. All right, give me one second, guys. I'm gonna do this just for you guys. I have another lure right behind me, okay? It's just my, uh, for my next video, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just because it's here, okay? I got my Zephyr. And some people said, you know, do the Zephyr versus Black Knight. Do the Zephyr Black Knight. Okay, fine, let's do it. I'm gonna cast this. See that? It touched the water and, and it stopped. It just completely stopped, right? That's what brakes are supposed to do. Okay. See, it stopped, okay? Heck, even if I put it on break number five, five out of six, okay? Let's see how that goes. Okay, so very little backlash, but this is exactly what you're supposed to expect when you um, have brakes that works, right? The other one, the, the spool just keep going. So that is no bueno. One last cast, let's see how the distance is with this lure. 160 south jig head. Look at that. With barely any wind, accuracy is not too bad. And keep in mind guys, the distance for this rod I'm throwing right now it's a little shorter because this is a shorter rod, okay? But anyway, we're done with this for now. You guys gotta watch this video if you guys wanna see me catch stuff with the paracord jig. But I have to end this video by saying that I am quite disappointed out of all the 
uh, reels that I've always do reviews on, right? It's always, I try to pick something really good for you guys. But this Kyoren Black Knight, you have to be truly brave and fearless and fish with low brakes or no brakes if you want to use this reel as a left-hander, okay? But I could do it. Like, you guys see me, I haven't really backlashed at all when I actually, you know, use my thumb. Um, so if you guys are new to BFS fishing, and you guys, or, you know, bait casting, and you're not good at using your thumb, this is not gonna be the reel for you guys to use. But for me, I guess it's fine. I mean, guys, that's freaking five breaks. And look at the distance I'm throwing. Like, I doubt I'll be throwing a lure that far with my Zephyr with the max breaks, right? So the brakes is clearly not working, uh, but it's still doing something because it's still magnets, right? There's a magnet force field. So guys, that was quite disappointing with uh, Kyoren Black Knight. I heard so much good stuff from it, but the, obviously the majority of the world reels from their right hand. And I find that interesting because, you know, as a right-hander, I like casting with my right hand because it's more accurate to cast. And I just reel with my left because it's just a simple motion. But a lot of people, apparently the right-handers will cast with their right hand and then swap off to the left hand to hold the rod and reel. Like, I guess that's, there's a pro to do that. Like, uh, I guess you have less fatigue because you'll cast and then you'll hold a rod and set the hook with the left, right? But, you know, uh, back to being on point, apparently the left hand side have issues, right? And I have a few other GH100 variant reels and I don't think it happened like on a GH100 at all. Uh, Dark Wolf, I only took it out like Twice, so I don't really know. And I just got bit by a tiger mosquito a second ago. Actually doing this extra, the second time because uh, I was smashing uh, tiger mosquitoes over there by the tree. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what to do, guys. Uh, I think I may use this one a few more times because I, again, I am proficient with, with using my thumb. Uh, if you guys are not, I don't think you guys should use it as a left hand reel, a uh, left hand reeler. And um, I may return this, I may keep it. I might dissect it and use the clicker for another GH variant reel. Or heck, if it fits a Zephyr, that'd be pretty cool, putting a clicker on a Zephyr, right? I don't know, guys, leave me a comment below, but uh, I'm quite torn right now. I usually do really good um, uh, research before I do a, a video product review for you guys, so you guys can have the best of the best CDM BFS reel. And my goal is to really promote the BFS world uh, so they have affordable products to test and then eventually, you know, perhaps even the JDM folks will start selling BFS stuff within the US market. Like that's my goal, right? But with this reel right here, this is a fail boat in my opinion. You guys think it's a fail boat? Leave me a comment below. I thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate you guys answer those last few questions. And uh, maybe I see you guys on the flip side with this reel um, a few more times or, you know, maybe I'll retrofit their stuff into another reel. We'll see, we'll see.